Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking paper texture effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to create a new composition. I'm just going to run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document and the duration, well, we only need about 5 seconds but we'll do that a little bit later on. So I'm just going to press OK. The first thing that you need to do is you need to import your paper texture. Now I've downloaded this paper texture from Freepik but you can get them anywhere all over the internet. Now once you've put your texture in, you can clearly see that the texture is larger than the composition size. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it down until it's just a little bit bigger than our actual comp size. Then to make things easier, I'm just going to rename this to number one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press Control D to duplicate that image. And then I'm just going to take the eye off over there so we can only see the number two layer. Then I'm just going to press R for rotation and then I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. And once you've done that, then you need to just make it a little bit bigger. So we're just going to expand that out a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it down. So I'm going to hold shift and maybe until it hits that point there. And now, so we're going to repeat this six times. So I'm just going to press Control D to duplicate. All right, take off the I, bring up the R, and then I'm just going to press plus 90. Okay, and so now I'm just going to bring this one a little bit closer together. And so now I'm going to put this at the end of my composition. So you want every frame to be unique. So I'm going to redo that again, take off the I, press R, and then 180 plus another 90. And so bring it out and then this time I'm going to move that this one up. So I'm just going to move it up. Something like that. And then we'll do the same thing again. So hit R and then we are going to add another 90 degrees. We'll take off that I and now I'll put that maybe in the middle just like that. Okay, cool. And then so we'll do that one more time. So I'm just going to hit R and then for this one, I'm just going to put it to 90 again and then I'm just going to bring it out. So I'm going to hold shift and then this time I'll just put it probably about there. So now what you want to do is I'm just going to highlight all those keyframes, press U to bring them all back and then I'm just going to put them all on individually. So I'm just going to Put it like this and so if i click on each one you can see that each one is different and that's what we want so what we need to do is we need to highlight all of those uh, layers and then i'm just going to zoom in because i only want to go to four frames and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold alt and hit the right curly bracket to cut that to about five frames and so now what we want is we want each of these layers on a different uh, layer and we're just going to sequence it. So we're just going to come over here to keyframe assistant and then go to sequence layers. And so now we've got, you know, the basis for our animation happening there. So the next step is to pre-compose this. So I'm just going to right click pre-composer and I'm going to call it main and then we need to loop it. So you can see that it kind of, it stops there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find out where it stops. So I know that it stops right there because this is a blank screen. So I'm just going to bring it back to one frame prior to that black screen. And then I'm just going to go to right click and go to time, enable time remapping. And you can see that we've got these two keyframes there. So all we need to do is we need to put a keyframe on the last frame of the paper texture. So you need to zoom in if you really need to find it. And then you're just going to click on that little button there to add a new keyframe. And then what we are going to do is we're just going to delete this last one. So I'm just going to double click on it. It's going to write zero. And then I'm just going to delete it. 
And so once you've done that, then what you need to do is you need to hold Alt on the stopwatch and then we need to apply the loop out expression. Now you can write loop out in there or you can just come down here and then go to uh, property and then just go to loop out. And if you've done this correctly, you will see that it will loop out for the entire duration of this composition. So that's looking pretty cool. We're gonna move on to the next step. So the next step is to add some text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the T tool and then I'm just gonna click on the screen. And then I'm just going to change to a font that I want to use. So now the font that I'm using is Impact. It's just, it should be default within After Effects. And once you're happy with the size, then I can just align it to the layer, just like that. So now once we've done that, what we need to do is we need to come over here and we need to toggle our switches so that you can see the track map. And then I'm just going to click alpha map. And so if you've done that correctly, you will now see the text within or the texture within the text. And so that's looking pretty cool just like that, but we're gonna take it to the next level. So now once you've got your effect like that, what we need to do is we're just going to duplicate that background and I'm just gonna drag it to the bottom and I'm just going to change the track mat to uh, no track mat. And then I'm just gonna pre-compose the texture and the main comp and I'm just going to call that text. And so now if I go and if I go to my effects and if I press on invert and I put it on there, you can see the black um, inverted texture on the outside. And that looks pretty cool just like that. So now on the text layer, what we need to do is we need to come over here and type drop shadow and then you can drag it to your text layer. The first drop shadow, we're just gonna bring up the opacity to about 100% and I'm just going to increase the distance to about 10. Now it's gonna be hard to see, so maybe you might have to increase it to about 20. But then I'm just gonna drag drop shadow on the text layer again and this time I'm going to change it to something a little bit more brighter so maybe like a, a pink color and I'm going to again bring up the opacity and I'm going to bring the distance let's say maybe 25 something like that and so now you can see the black uh, behind the, the text anyways. So now what we are going to do is we are going to animate the drop shadow behind it. So we're gonna do this every five frames. So I'll show you what we have to do. So I'm just gonna click on the stopwatch for direction. We'll start it at 135 degrees. Then I'm just gonna press shift and page down. And then I'm just going to add plus 90. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing again. Shift, page down, 225, plus 90. Okay, and then shift, page down, click on that and I'm just going to write plus 90 and so I'll do that finally for the last one so shift uh, plus 90 and that will bring it back to where we started from so now if I play that it will have this drop shadow going around in the background like that and so we don't really want that so I'm just going to press U to bring up all my keyframes and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on that and go to toggle hold keyframe and so now if we've done that correctly you will see that it's kind of you know going in the background and it's kind of moving with the texture and I think it's looking pretty cool. Now, all we need to do is make this loop forever. So again, we hold the uh, Alt key on our keyboard. We press on the stopwatch and we just go to uh, property and then we go to loop out. And now if you've done that correctly, you will see that it will now just loop forever. And if you don't like how far the spacing is for this uh, drop shadow, you can always bring it down. So if you want it something a bit smaller, like 20 or something like that, or even 15, just, you know, something very, very simple, just to, you know, give it a little bit more color and a bit more life. So anyways, guys, that's about it for today. Thanks for watching this very simple tutorial on how to do a paper texture in Adobe After Effects. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.